welcome to Ultimate Survival Tips. I'm David. I'm really glad that you stopped by today because Dr. Joe is back. So here's the deal. After the survival kit showdown that I did with Dr. Joe, you guys wanted more. So we went out and shot two sessions for a topic that I get a lot of requests for, wild edible plants. So what you're about to see is session two of two. Come on, let's get started. Well, you know, again, I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but um, they're so, they're present everywhere. Uh, black, these are blackberries. Yep. They look a lot like raspberries. They have a more upright stance and a little different leafing system, different thorns. Obviously, we know that we can eat the fruits. You can also make a nice tea from the leaves, which doesn't have a lot of nutritive okay. value. Um, I didn't know but that. Is, but is pleasant. Are the leaves edible just, then? They would be, although I don't like them. They've got little you know, prickery things on them. But it was just there, so I thought we'd bring it up. And one thing that I think we forget is that cultivated varieties of things often have you know, wild, now wild equivalents. And so it's, in my mind, I like to memorize what does an apple leaf, plum leaf, pear leaf look like from a distance, uh, especially early in the year or in the fall, you know, when you're just trying to figure out what's, what's my uh, environment like, you wanna just be able to pattern recognize things. Yep. So from a distance, that's an apple tree. I just like you can see that's rose, that's willow, you know, that's elderberry, bam, bam, bam. You want to be able to do that so that you can approach an area. And a lot of times that's an area that's going to have a lot of free food because that's an area where other animals have found the free food and finished with the free food, planted yep. it. And this yeah. is they're coming to get their water. Get their water. They're Eat. finishing their business and they're planting things. Yeah, they're planting things. I like that. They're propagating the species. They are. So, I mean, it's obvious. We can eat apples. Is there anything else we can do with this? Uh, I wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. We're not going to eat the leaves, bark, nothing. Just no, the apples. no, we're not. We're but just, there's no apples now. That's there's sad. no, there's no apples. Uh, not, not yet. So I just passed by this. I thought okay. this was a great example. Here's what you're going to be looking for in winter time when these are ready, or just oh, in back the fall. to the rose. Okay. Yeah. This is the this is the multiflora rose, and and here's the rose hips forming. They're really good when they're, but they're going to be bright red. Uh, you're going to know when they're ready because they're going to okay. look like they, they're tasty. Don't eat them now. Eat them yeah. when they're bright red. Yeah, I don't think they'll hurt you now, but uh, they're, they've got bite when they're ripe. So I'll, I'll try one. Can you I wanna, try one? Yeah, yeah. You I'll, can, I mean, I'll try, try a handful. Try a handful you pull off, dare me. No, I would <laughs> never dare you. Never dare a Marine. <laughs> Dude, by the way, I love the Army shirt. Yeah, it's a shameless plug. <laughs> Just had to do it to you. Mm, let's watch his facial expressions. What do you think? Better when ripe, maybe? I'm definitely going to need a drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> so what I didn't tell you is one of its properties is that it's highly astringent, which means it feels like it's sucking the fluid out of your it, face. It does feel like it's sucking the fluid. <laughs> right. I refuse to spit them out, though. Yeah, you're an awesome guy. My eyes are watering. I know. Now, that astringency will largely disappear <coughs> when, it's, when it's ripe. So astringency is good for what? Sometimes that's helpful for insect bites, bee stings, etc. Okay. One of the things we didn't identify today, like plantain, uh, there's people stories of being stung by bees and they'll just take some plantain chew it up till it makes a paste and rub it all over the stings so and eating eating the astringent isn't necessarily the helpful thing but exactly but mashing it up putting and it putting on, on mashing it up putting it on a gotcha. cut a wound something where you want the tissues to feel like they're drawing together whether that's really medically true or not that's the that's the that's the folklore the, the folklore and, okay. and a lot of that has you know great benefits so okay. we don't want to discount that okay cool yeah what's next get a good look here hey, these are wild grapes this is where basically the concord kind of grapes uh, have been uh, bred out from and the grape leaf is is kind of hard to screw up most of us have seen you know, even just drawings on walls or on a wine bottle or someplace. So there's grape leaves. So most of us are familiar with grape leaves and the fact that they have a climbing habit and they're growing mm -hmm. on things. So they're, they're pretty they're easy to, easy yeah. to identify. They don't taste great. If you're looking to yeah. bite into a grape, yep. that's gonna like you bought it from the store. There's a reason they bred them out from this. They're highly astringent, but remember, always eat the seeds. They're great for you. Antioxidants, protein, calories, good stuff. Maybe you want to sprinkle it into your salad so that you're not having just a handful of these grapes. I'm, I'm going to have some grapes. With, you are? You um, beast. Not, well, so I'm going to have them with some raspberries. I think you deserve the, <laughs> you deserve a lot more raspberries than that. Raspberry makes it You know, better. that's, it makes it better. Yeah. It's actually like, it's, gonna, it's like a grape nut. Are we to a last one? Can we do that? We can do that. Let's just take a peek at what our best last one is going to be. Okay. It's kind of hard to talk about all these uh, 
vegetables when I'm seeing foot and a half bass floating around in that pond. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last one. What do you got? Yeah, you know, it reminds me. Remember the, the last video we did, the uh, the dueling survival kits, which which quite frankly, I, I think I think you, I, I liked yours better. I had a few things, but I, well, I, I'm going to concede that one. Okay. Because you remember all the fire redundancy we had in that yes. pack? Yep. What was our first thing to go to? A, a lighter. A lighter. Yeah, right? absolutely. Because yeah. it's easy. Yeah, right? thanks. So just like the lighter, <laughs> okay. you know, we're going to go easy. So, you know, we've been around here, we can forage the stuff, we can do this, we can boil that, we can strip this down, etc. Right. But, you know, there's something, when you can go for easy, you know, oh, I really... back here. Yeah. That is not the direction I thought you were going to go. When you can go for easy, Dave. <laughs> go for easy. It's good stuff. Dude! Man. Enjoy. That is awesome. Yeah. Nice job, man. You give it All right. Me. So I just wanted to... I'm carrying my pack and sweating for a reason. So I want to mention a couple good resources. The Peterson Field Guides, mm -hmm. Edible Wild Plants. Mm -hmm. Do you use this? Mm -hmm. you, would you recommend mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a great manual, and it's small enough and light enough. You can put it in your bug out bag or carry it with you, but use it. You know, get out and right. use it. I mean, that's how you're going to learn this stuff, by doing it. And one of the things I like about it, it's pretty straightforward. If it's questionable or it's poisonous yep. or it has to be processed to make it safe, it's going to tell you. Yep. And it has like a skull and crossbones for naughty, naughty. Yep. It has a flour sack for, you can make this into something to cook with. It, and it has just a, like a cup of tea, if it's, you make it for tea, as a medicine bottle, Yeah. if it's a medicine. So it's really friendly that way. It's good stuff. I yeah. like it. Okay. So that's one. The other one is, is just, I mean, I, I just, as long as I can walk and breathe and bear the weight, this is going in my bug out bag. Mm. It's uh, yeah. SAS uh, Survival. Uh, handbook, handbook yep. by Lofty Wiseman. It's nice. Is that it's his nice. real name? Uh, you know, Lofty we don't Wiseman. ask questions like that. Okay. <laughs> but it's got a very nice, concise guide to edible wild plants. Yeah. Tells you again what's naughty. There's skull and crossbones right. here. And uh, it, this book actually do, deals with every climate zone. Which is nice. Which is nice. Which is nice. Very and nice. One more I wanted to mention. I don't know if you want to mention any, any others, but uh, Creek Storts. Uh, this is the unofficial Hunger Games. Uh, wilderness survival guide and yeah. i mean that's sweet cool, because you know what cool title and because hunger games 2 is coming out mm. in november so you know yeah. good timing on creek's part Thanks. in here creek has a really concise uh section where he his methodology is very similar to yours let's focus on edible wild plants that are easy to find easy to identify and aren't going to kill you so a uh, nice section in here, and it's it's the rest of the survival guide is kind of like that. Very concise. Here's what you really need to know if you need to know something. Excuse me. You want some pizza? Okay, so we'll do this again. Maybe next time let's do woodland mm. stuff. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Okay. Sounds cool, good. Thanks, right. dude. Enjoy. It was fun. All right. We've just taken a look at a few common wild edible plants that are easy to identify and prepare in a survival situation. For your convenience, I've included links to the books that we've mentioned and a link to part one of this series in the video description on YouTube. Just click the Show More tab under this video. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more gear reviews, survival tips, and survival news, check out ultimatesurvivaltips.com. While you're there, grab our monthly survival e-mag, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter to get the latest news and be the first to hear about the great gear giveaway contests we have planned. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side, and remember, be prepared, because you never know.